Okay. So let's start our review of GenChem. Uh, our focus for this chapter are the following. No? So we were going to review how to deal with scientific notations, uh, including the operations that are uh, that are needed to be carried out no? when dealing with uh, scientific notations. Next one, next one is the significant figures. No? So how do we know uh, how many significant figures are there in your measurement and how to deal with operations involving significant figure rules. No? And then lastly, we will have dimension analysis. No? So all of this has been discussed to you last semester. Uh, this is also the first chapter of inorganic cap. Okay, so this is not new for you, no? So, so I would say that this will be your easiest exam, uh, easiest quiz, no, for this semester. So, hopefully, okay. <clears throat> so let's start now. Uh, when handling numbers in chemistry, no, uh, we usually deal with either huge numbers or small numbers okay so when i say huge numbers we are dealing with numbers with lots of zeros in it and when i say small numbers we are also dealing with numbers that have many zeros in it no? so for example let's consider the number of particles that are there in a mole of a substance now so for this particular example we have a gram of hydrogen atom which is equivalent to one mole of hydrogen atom it approximately contains this number of atoms so let's count how many zeros are there so this is actually the avogadro's number written in uh written in complete form huh? so let's check how many zeros are there so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve Okay, so this is million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. I don't know. I, I don't know how to call any zeros beyond this quadrillion mark. Okay, so so yeah, that's the that's the problem with dealing with lots of zeros. Now, so you have to remember the um, their classifications based on the number of zeros, the right? So it's it's quite the hard work, no? Masyadong mahirap siya i-work out, no? So, yan. And one problem with dealing with lots of zero is that when you are writing them down in your notes, no? It is possible that you will take much longer time, okay? When writing all these zeros because you have to double check, no? Whether you have written out the correct number of zeros or not, no? If you did not write the... Uh, correct number of zeros then your calculations may be wrong later on okay so th those are the problems when dealing with lots of zeros okay so masyadong maraming zero that you don't that you do not know uh, ano yung tawag sa kanya how, how that number is called and there are possible cases that when you are writing down the number there are cases that you may miss or be in excess of zeros, no? So, yan. Uh, kapag sobra or kulang ng zero, yan. You will have problems with your calculations later on. Okay? So, that's the Avogadro's number written in complete uh, decimal form. And then this one is the... <coughs> Excuse me. And then this one is the mass of a single hydrogen atom. So let's look. No? Uh, uh, let's take a look how many zeros are there. So let's count. This is the tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, and so on. Okay. So there's lots of zeros here. Uh, this is three, six, nine. Uh, okay. Nadudulong na ako. 12, 12 na ba? 15, 18, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so there are 23 zeros before you arrive with the first non-zero digit. No? 
So those are the problems with uh, dealing with uh, no, with numbers with many zeros in chemistry. Okay, so you may want to double check them all throughout the time now, so that you will have the correct figures with you. Okay, and because it will it is time consuming for chemists, no, and even uh, and scientists before, so they arrive with something now that would make this work uh, much easier now. So when dealing with these figures, uh, they made a new notation that will make this, uh, that will make writing these numbers easier, no? a lot more easier, okay? And that format no, or that notation that they are using until now is what's called the scientific notation, okay? So scientific notations are numbers written in this format, okay? We're in the big letter N, okay, the capital letter N represents the coefficient, no? Okay, so the coefficient is a number which has values, uh, which has values uh, at least greater than one, however, less than 10. Okay, so actually that's greater than or equal to one and less than 10, okay? <coughs> Okay, and then times 10 raised to small letter n. So small letter n is your integer exponent. That means it is a whole number exponent, okay? Uh, which tells you how many, uh, how many decimal places you move your decimal point to arrive with your coefficient, okay? So either you move to the left or to the right, there is a corresponding sign for the small letter n, okay? So if you move your decimal point uh, to the left, then your n value, your small letter n value will be positive. However, if you move your decimal point to the right side of the number, then your small letter n value will be negative, okay? So that means we can rewrite this number here, okay, <coughs> excuse me. So we can rewrite this number here into a scientific notation, okay. So how are we going to do that? Okay, so first you have to identify where the decimal point will be now. So if the decimal point is not written, so you, we usually place it on the units place now, before the units place. Okay, so this is the units place. No? If you could still remember your elementary uh, maths. No? So this is the units, hundred, uh, tens, hundreds, thousands, diba? So this is the unit place. Before that, you have your decimal point by default. Okay, and then what's next is that you will have to move your decimal point so you will arrive with the coefficient that is within numbers one and 10, okay? So that's between those numbers, okay? So if I have my decimal point here and I did not move it, this number, this entire number here is way greater than 10, okay? So that means this is not the final form of my scientific notation yet. No? So I have to move my decimal point to the left, no? So that I will come up with a coefficient that is within one to 10. So suppose I place my decimal point here, okay? Okay, dito sa mouse cursor. If I move my decimal point here, is that the final form of my scientific notation? Not yet, because this number on the right side, uh, I mean on the left side of the new position for the decimal point, okay? That is still way greater than 10. That means I have to move my decimal point further to the left, so I will have a number that corresponds to the criteria for the coefficient, okay? So that means I have to move this decimal point all the way here at the end, okay? So that my number, my new coefficient, will be within the range of 1 to 10, okay? So this is 6.022. If I move my decimal point from here to this position, okay, so 6.022 is um, 
is within the range of 1 to 10, which is the criteria for the coefficient. So we're good to go. Okay. So that's how you uh, identify uh, at which point will you stop your uh, movement of decimal point. No? Okay. So ganun yung criteria natin. So you move your decimal point until your number will be within the range of 1 to 10. Okay. So the next question is that how many places will you have to move your decimal point to the left now so that it will arrive with your coefficient 6.022. So bilangin natin, okay? So let's count how many steps uh, should be taken in order to get that coefficient. So let's start. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Okay, so that means I move my decimal point 23 places to the left. Okay, and then my coefficient will be 6.022. How, how am I going to write this in scientific notation? So I will copy this uh, this uh, no, this coefficient as is. So, so that's my coefficient. Then I will multiply it by 10 raised to how many steps uh, the decimal point moved. No? So since my decimal point moved 23 places to the left now, so every time you move to the left, so that's positive in value now. So this will be raised to positive 23. If I happen to move my decimal point to the right, so then the exponent will be negative naman, okay? So but in our case, I move the decimal point to the left, okay? So... And so I move my decimal point to the left, so I ended up with a positive 23 exponent, okay? So this is just a review. I know you know this already, but it will be better no, if I, <laughs> if we do this session, okay? Because later on we will we will be dealing with lots of this number numbers okay okay so next one so recall this number this is the mass of a single hydrogen atom okay and as you can see there's lots of zeros in it no so we don't like that uh, so in uh, for us to resolve this case no what we're going to do is to write this in scientific notation. So again, I have to move my decimal point from the original position, okay? So this is the unit place, this is the decimal point again. Uh, I have to move this decimal point in such way that when I place it in between numbers, I will have, no, I will have a coefficient that is within the range of one to 10, okay? So, galawin natin yung decimal point na. So, if I move my decimal point here, will the new number be uh, qualified for my coefficient? Uh, if I move my decimal point here, okay ba siya for the coefficient? No, no. Because this, num this new number, if I move my decimal point here, to where my mouse cursor is pointed, that is still less than z less than one okay so our criteria is that the minimum number for the coefficient is one but this one is zero point something okay so this is still in decimal no so that means we really have to move our decimal point further to the right okay so if i move my decimal point here to where my mouse cursor is pointed no? If I move my decimal point here, this is still not the uh, not the number that I will write in my um, coefficient part, no? because this, this is still less than one. Eh? 
However, if I move my decimal point here in between 1 and 6, then that is okay for my coefficient. Uh, that's, that qualifies no, for the criteria for your coefficient. No. Again, the minimum law, the minimum number for your uh, for your coefficient is one. Okay, so you stop uh, when you're be in between one and six now. So that will be your coefficient. So one point sixty six. Okay, and then you identify how many steps are uh, are needed to be. Uh, taken no to move your decimal point to the right so you will arrive with this coefficient so let's count how many steps no yun nagawa natin so bilang tayo sa dalawa tatlo apat lima anim pito alo sham 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, okay, so 24. So I move my decimal point 24 places to the right. Every time you move your decimal point to the right, that means your exponent will be negative in value. So that means I can write, rewrite this whole number as 1.66 times 10 raised to negative 24. So this is my coefficient, which corresponds to this part of this original number, times 10 raised to negative 24. So that means I moved my decimal point 24 places to the right now to arrive with this digit, okay? So that's how we write numbers in scientific notation. Next one is the operations that involves uh, addition and subtraction of numbers written in scientific notation. Okay, so what are the rules? Now? If you could still remember, uh, addition and subtraction of numbers that are written in the scientific notation, you, you must make sure that the exponents are the same. Okay, so that's the first thing you will need to do check if the exponents are the same then if the exponents are the same you just copy the original exponent part and then you add the coefficients okay okay so let's have this one for example uh, this is 7.4 times 10 raised to 3 plus 2.1 times 10 raised to 3 Again, you check first if the coefficients are the same, are they? Yes, yes, po, no? So the coefficients are both 10 raised to 3. So all you have to do is to just copy them. Okay, so that's your exponent. And then later on, you will need to add your coefficients. Okay, so that's 7.4 plus 2.1. So that will be... 9.5 times 10 raised to 3. Okay, so that's our final answer. So that's how you add numbers written in scientific notation. Again, you check if the coefficients, I mean the exponents are the same. Okay, once the exponents are the same, you add your coefficients. Okay. Okay, so we ended up with the same answer, 9.5 times 10 raised to 3. What if your numbers, no, your number uh, do not have the same exponent? No? So let's have this for example. We have 2.43 times 10 raised to 3 plus 3.1 times 10 raised to 2. Okay, so it is obvious that the exponents are not the same. So how are we going to add them? Okay. So, so in order for us to add these numbers, we have to make the exponents the same first. Okay. So when making their exponents the same, for, okay, uh, one number should be adjusted No to the other exponent's value, okay? So that means I can make this times 10 raised to 3 exponent equal to times 10 raised to 2, 
or I can make this times 10 raised to 2 exponents equal to uh, times 10 raised to 3. How? How will I make those exponents equal? I just need to move my decimal point, no? either to the left or to the right. Okay. So suppose I want my exponent to be both times 10 raised to 3. So I'm going to rewrite the two original numbers into a scientific notation whose exponent is 3. Okay. So for the first number, I am not going to do anything about this because its exponent is already 3. However, for the second number, for this number to be written in times 10 raised to 3, that means I have to move my decimal point one place to the left, okay? Because every time you move your decimal point to the left, your exponent will increase by positive 1, okay? Incre increase by 1, okay? Positive na nga, increase pa, no? <laughs> Okay, so you, every time you move your decimal point to the left, your exponent will be increased by 1, okay? However, if you move your decimal point to the right, then your exponent will decrease by 1, okay? So let's move my decimal point one step to the left. So that means my exponent will be increased to 3, okay? And my new coefficient will be 0. 31. Once my exponents are the same, so I will just copy them and then I will add my coefficient. So that will be 243 plus 031. Uh, add natin. Cannot be the joke. <laughs> 274 times 10 raised to 3. Okay, so this is our final answer <coughs> okay uh, sir what if i want to make my exponents uh the same no uh na n is equals to two no? what if you want your exponent be equal to two uh, will you still end up with the same answer let's check now okay so in this in this case uh, i'm going to rewrite my exponents uh to the power of 2. So that means for the second number, I'm not going to do anything because it is already raised to 2. However, for the first number, I have to rewrite this now so that my exponent will be raised to 2. Just for this uh, example now. Okay. So to make this number uh, written in the second power, okay. So that means I have to move my decimal point to the right again. Because every time you move your decimal point to the right, your exponent will decrease by 1. Okay, So once one step uh, to the right, that's 3 minus 1, that will give me an exponent 2. Now. Okay, So I can rewrite my coefficient as 24.3 times 10 raised to 2. And now since the exponents are the same, I will just copy them and then add my coefficients okay so adding them that will give me 27.4 times 10 raised to 2 however is this the final answer no why para kon si dora na ako rin nagsasagot ng tanong ko so is this the final answer no the reason why is that the coefficient is not within the range of 1 to 10. Okay, So I have to make this in between those ranges no, para that qualifies no, sa rules ng scientific notation. Okay, So that it will qualify no, sa rules niya. So that means I have to move my decimal point once more to the left. And that will increase my exponent by 1. Hence, I will end up with the same answer just like the previous uh, method. No? So I will have 2.74 times 10 raised to 3. Okay, so again, the final answer should be written in the correct uh, scientific notation uh, rules. Okay, so yun lang. 
So let's check our answers. Okay, so we we arrive with the correct answer naman. Okay. Oh, one more example. Uh, this again. <coughs> so let's try this one. So we have 2.22 times 10 raised to negative 2 minus 4.3 times 10 raised to negative 3. So again, we should make their exponents the same. Okay, so the other exponent is negative 2 and negative 3 for the other one. Okay, so we should make them the same. How? By moving your decimal point now. Uh, suppose I want to make my exponent equal to 10 raised to negative 2 for both numbers. Okay, so that means for the first digit, I'm not going to do anything with this because this is already raised to negative 2. However, for my second digit, no, for my subtrahend, no, I need to move my decimal point one place to the left okay so i need to move my decimal point one place to the left so that the exponent will be increased from negative three to negative two okay so ganun. so i will need to move my decimal point one place to the left so the exponent will be increased from negative three to pass uh, negative two okay so this will be written as 0, 4, 3. Okay, and so now, since we have the same exponents, you just copy that, and then you subtract your uh, coefficients now. Ito, kailangan ko na ng calcul dyan. Hindi ko na i-mental. 2.10. Okay, so this will be 1.79 times 10 raised to negative 2. Okay, so the same rule applies uh, as that of the addition. So, ganun lang. You just make sure that the exponents are the same. After that, you're good to go. <coughs> okay, so next one, let's proceed with multiplication and division. Okay. When multiplying and dividing numbers written in scientific notation, okay. so instead of, uh, re of making sure that your exponents are the same, no, you just do operations with them as is. No? So you're not going to modify the number. Okay. Okay. So what you're going to do is that for multiplication, you multiply the coefficients. However, you have to add the exponents okay so you multiply the coefficient and then you add the exponents that's the rule for multiplication for division you have to divide your uh, coefficients and then you have to subtract your exponents okay so again multiplication add exponents division subtract exponents okay so let's have this uh, one for example so i have here 7.4 times 10 raised to 3 times 2.1 times 10 raised to 3 so again i will do operation with the two numbers as is even um uh, okay. So, yan, so I will do my operation with these two numbers as is. No? So I will multiply my coefficients. So that will be 7.4 times 2.1 times 10 raised to. What am I going to do with exponents? I will add them. No? So I add the two exponents. No? So di kailangan parehas. Basta i-add mo lang. So yan. So calculator ko na para mabilis <laughs> so for the coefficient far uh coefic coefficient part so that's 7.4 times 2.1 so the product is 15.54 
the exponent will be now 6. Okay. Okay. So my coefficient will be 15.54. Okay. And the exponent will be 6. The question is this the final answer? Not yet. Because my coefficient is greater than 10. So it should be at least within 1 to 10 now so that means i have to move uh, i have to move my decimal point no to the left okay so i have to move it to the left so that the coefficient will now be within 1 to 10 okay so that will be 1.554 times 10 raised to 7 this time so since i move my decimal point to the left my exponent will increase by one okay so from six it will become seven okay i am so yeah okay so let's have another example division so when dividing it doesn't matter if your exponents are different because you will do operations with them the, the same way as your coefficients now. so let's have this example uh, 2.22 times 10 raised to negative 2 divided by 4.3 times 10 raised to negative 3. so what i'm going to do with my coefficients is that i will divide the two okay so that's 2.22 divided by 4.3 times 10 raised to but how am I going to uh, deal with the exponents okay so you subtract them because the operation is division okay so that's negative 2 minus negative 3 okay so let's focus first on the exponent part what is negative 2 minus negative 3? According to your high school math, okay, when when you subtract negative numbers, okay, it's just like multiplying the two negative values, no? So multiplying negative number by a negative number will give you positive value, okay? So that means we can rewrite this uh, exponent operation here from negative 2 minus negative 3 to negative 2 plus 3 okay so again whenever your uh, subtraction symbol and your negative sign are uh, besides each other it can be rewritten as positive symbol okay so ganun negative minus another negative now so those negatives multiply uh, and they become positive you now so ganun lang uh, for your coefficient part uh, hindi na yung kaya e mental so use your calculator uh, that's lots of number okay so i will write the first four digits na lang so that's 0 0.5164 that 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 okay so uh, so the quotient is continuous eh? so I, I just write the uh, four the four digits na lang. okay so what's my answer <laughs> my answer will be 0.5164 dot 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 times 10 raised to minus 2 plus 3 is positive 1 okay however is this the final answer no, because my coefficient is less than 1. Okay? So it's 0 0.5. So I have to move my decimal point to the ra uh, right. And as a consequence, my exponent will be decreased by 1. Okay. So uh, therefore, my final answer is 5.164 so on times 10 raised to 0. So, sir, are there, ex uh, are there scientific notations written uh, with exponent equal to 0? Yes, but that's okay. Yeah. Because the criteria for the exponent is as long as it is an integer, that's okay. And when they say integer, uh, that we are pertaining to whole numbers, 
Okay? And whole number spans from negative numbers to positive numbers. In between those numbers, you have your zero. Okay? So that means it is okay to write your scientific notation with exponent being equal to zero. Okay? Because that's within the criteria for the integers, diba? So that's according to your high school math naman. Okay? Okay, so we're we're done with the uh, with the scientific notations now. So next one, significant figures. Because in analytical chemistry, there are cases in which you have to report your final answer in the correct significant figures now. And also, every time you use uh, certain volumetric glasswares, uh, you have to report your answers in significant figures no? in the correct significant figures no? for example you are using a burette okay uh, when you use a burette you report your answers always in um, three, three significant figures or two significant figures only okay so if you use pipette you also report the answer in three or two significant figures no so for each instrument in anachem no you have to do that no you have to uh you you have to report your measurement in the correct significant figures okay so when measuring uh when measuring stuff you have to report the final answer in the correct significant figure okay why because and uh, that leaves room for errors no that uh, i mean that means loop, uh, room for margins of errors no in measurement no so ganun lang not all numbers are to be written no especially when you are calculating you you will not need to write all the digits in the decimal place no so you don't have to do that no because uh, our final answers must be written in the correct significant figures depending on the instrument you used no or whatever is required uh, as a problem okay so, however, let's recall first, no, how do we know that a, that a figure, that a number is significant, no? So, there are five guidelines. There are five easy guidelines for us to follow. Number one, all non-zero digits are significant. So, that means any number between one to nine, they are significant, okay? So, for example, let's have this one. How many sig fig do we have here? And the five, no? Why? Because we have five non-zero digits. Three, five, six, one, and two, okay? So all of those digits are non-zero, hence they are significant, okay? Next one. So how many sig fig do we have there? We have four sig figs, okay? Because we have four non-zero uh, figures. Okay, so that's the first rule. Very easy one. Next one, zeros between non-zero digits are significant, okay? So as long as you have zeros in between non-zero digits, they are considered significant. So let's have some few examples. How many sig fig do we have here? So we have six sig figs, okay? This zero in here is in between seven and five, okay? So that means this zero is significant, okay? <coughs> okay, how about this binary code? One zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, one. I don't know uh, what does that mean, okay? How many sig fig do we have here? Okay, so all of its digits are considered significant figures now because those zeros are between non-zero digits now. Okay, in this case, that's one, okay? So, yun lang. Uh, let's have rule number three and four. Okay, so for rules three and four, uh, we have to consider two types of zeros, okay? 
So what are the two types of zeros in the decimal format? Okay. So so we have let's have this for uh, let's have this example moon. Okay. So there are two types of zeros in this number. Okay. The one is the leading zero and the other is the trailing zero. So which of the two is the leading zero? Obviously, the leading zeros are the zeros written first hand before the uh, non-zero digits. No? So we call them leading zeros. No? Yeah. So they are the leading zeros. And this two at the last are called uh, no, trailing zeros. <laughs> Okay, so depending on the type of zero you have in your decimal format, okay, one of which is not significant and the other is significant at times, okay. So which of the two types of zero is not significant, okay? The leading zeros, okay. So leading zeros, they are not significant, no? They are never significant, Signi Significant. Okay, so they are not considered when counting significant figures. So what are their purpose? No, so their purpose in life is just to tell you where the decimal point is. Okay, they only tell you where the decimal point is. Then it tells where the decimal point is. Okay. So that's the uh, that's the role of uh, leading zeros in your number. Okay, so they tell you where the decimal point is. However, they are not considered a significant figure. You know? so ganon. For trailing zeros, naman, they may be considered significant figures. Okay, so they may be considered significant figures provided that your number has a decimal point in it okay so your number must have a decimal point for it to be significant okay so it doesn't matter whether your decimal point is reading uh, I, I, so it doesn't matter whether your decimal point is on the leading zeros or on the trailing zeros. As long as there is decimal point in your number, kahit saan position siya, that's okay lang. As long as you have your decimal point, then your trailing zeros are considered significant. What if you do not have any decimal point in your number, yet you have a trailing zero? So for such cases, that's rule number five, no? That's the ambiguity case, okay? Okay, so we'll go to that later on. So again, uh, this is this the summary of rules three and four. Leading zeros are not always significant, okay? So trailing zeros, they are significant provided that there is a decimal point in your number regardless uh, kung saan siya nakalagay, no? regardless of its position, okay, in your number. So, ito yan. So, rule number three. Mm -hmm. Teka lang. Okay, so this is the leading zero. Mm -hmm. So, this is the leading zero. So, that is not significant. These are the leading zeros and they are not significant, okay? And then you have here your trailing zeros, which is significant, no? which are significant because of the presence of your decimal point. Okay, So provided that your number has a decimal point, your trailing zeros will be significant. Okay, So that's rule three and four. Okay, So again, this is a trailing zero. It is significant because of the decimal point okay so ayan what if you do not have any decimal point at all yet you have a uh, you have a trailing zero okay so as just as i told you earlier this is a case of ambiguity so when say ambiguity 
it depends on the interpretation okay so some textbook may say that this number this 500 will contain one sig fig okay? some textbook will say that that this is just one significant figures others may say that it contains two sig fig others may say it contains three sig fig okay so i've seen lots of books no that disagree with each other uh, in such cases that there's no decimal point at all and you have a trailing zeros okay so what to do see uh, so the correct way to deal with this is that to treat this number as an ambiguous number so that means uh, every ter interpretation will not agree you know, with each other talaga, no? so i've read lots of chem books since then and i've seen lots of them disagree with each other so uh, we will call this case an ambiguous case na lang okay even internet resources no so i'm doing chemistry for uh, ilang years na ba four years when i was studying my undergrad two years in teaching no? so the six years in total plus yung high school pa okay so yeah so and dami ko nakikitang nagdi-disagree with each other so we will call this an ambiguous case okay so, how are we going to deal with ambiguous cases? Now, so in order, uh, in order for us to resolve this, we can either write our numbers in scientific notation or just put a decimal point. Okay? So there are two ways to resolve this ambiguity. Okay? So you write it in scientific notation or you place a decimal point. Okay? Uh, that's that's our resolve now for this case so for example i write it as 5 times 10 raised to 2 then my number will have one significant figure by the way uh, when uh, looking for the number of sig figs in your scientific notation just look at your uh, coefficient okay so only the coefficient part will be considered when counting the sig figs of number written in scientific notation. So 5 times 10 raised to 2 has only one sig fig because of the 5. 5.0 has two sig figs. Uh, the zero there is a trailing zero. However, because of the presence of decimal point, that's considered significant. 5.00 has three significant figures. Naman. Okay. <coughs> and the other way is to just put a decimal point at the end. Ah, na hindi ko siya sinulat. Okay, so the other way is to just write 500 with a decimal point at the end. And that will give you 3 sig fig. Okay? However, if you do not put any decimal point, that will be ambiguous. Okay? So you have to you resolve that. Okay? Tama ba spelling ko? <laughs> so, yan. So that's why when you uh, when you check the quizzes later on sa analytical chemistry, you will see numbers with decimal point at the end. No? For example, mga ganito, 250 ml vol flask. Baka isipin nyo that decimal point is just written there for no reason at all. No. The, the reason why the decimal point is written there is that... <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> so the reason why the decimal point is written there is that uh, it tells you that this zero at the end, uh, asan yung mouse ko? Ayan. So it tells you that the zero at the end is considered significant. So your final answer must be written in three significant figures. Okay. So you will see more of them when you take your quizzes na no? So, may makikita kayong numbers with decimal point at the end. So, their purpose is to tell you the correct sig fig that is needed sa question. Okay? So, ganun lang. Uh, let's, let's identify how many sig figs do we have here. So, we have A to E. So, you, you may raise your hand. Uh, just press the raise hand button here in your... Uh, in your Teams app, okay? 
so I can recognize your names. No? So let's start with the A. How many sig figs do we have here? Okay, so let's have Darlene. Uh, use your mic para marinig natin. Two significant figures po. Okay, so that's correct. We have two sig figs because the two digits are non-zero digits. Okay, so thank you, Darlene. So let's have the next one. So let's have Jean Paula. And four significant figures. Four sig figs four because... Because the zeros are in between two non-zero digits, so that falls under rule number two. Okay, so thank you, Jean. Okay, so for letter C, let's have Maria Cheska. <laughs> the significant figures book. Okay, so thank you, uh, Maria Cheska. So this is three. Completo talaga yung pangalan. No? <laughs> okay, so thank you, Cheska. So this is three sig figs because the two zeros here are considered leading zeros and they are not significant. However, this trailing zero is considered significant because of the presence of the decimal point. So these are the three sig figs. Now let's have letter D. <clears throat> letter D. Uh, let's have Darlene again. So, Darlene. Two significant figures, po. Okay, so we have two significant figures here because the two digits are non-zero digits. Again, when checking for the sig figs of your scientific notation, you just look at the coefficients. No? You do not include the exponential part, okay? So, thank you, Darlene. And last one. Uh, let's have Jean Ambiguous case. Okay, so for letter E, this is an ambiguous case. Okay, so this is an ambiguous case because this trailing zero do not have any decimal point at all. Okay, so you don't know whether you're going to interpret this as two sig figs or three sig fig. No, some textbook will say this is two sig fig. Others will say this is three sig figs. No? So there's, an, there's a disagreement. No? Okay, so this is ambiguous. How am I going to resolve this? We use sig, uh, scientific notation. So I can write that as eight, uh, 8 8.3 times 10 raised to 2. I can also write that as 8.30 times 10 raised to 2. So this will have two sig fig. This will have three sig fig or I can rewrite that as 830 dot, okay? So I will have three sig figs, okay? So I have many ways to resolve the ambiguity, okay? Okay, so we're not done yet. So let's talk about the operations involving significant figures, okay? Right? So, yeah. So this has also been discussed to you last semester, chapter one in the lecture. So... Uh, this is not new for you, huh? Okay. So let's talk about addition and subtraction of numbers. No? If you are going to report your numbers, no, your added or your subtracted numbers in the correct manner, okay? So you should check no, if your final answer is written with the least decimal places. No? Okay, so again, uh, when we are talking about addition and, and subtraction, we are looking for the final answer that is written in the least decimal places, okay? So let's have these two numbers. <coughs> so how do we count the decimal places, Ole? So in order for us to count the decimal place, you just check how many digits are there at the right side of your decimal point. So for this number, we have three digits written at the right side of your decimal point. So that means I have three decimal places for this number. For the other one, I have only one digit written at the right side of my uh, number. Uh, I mean my decimal point. So that means I only have one decimal point. Okay. So... How am I going to solve this uh, considering the uh, rules for operations with sig figs? No? 
Okay, so this is how you're going to answer this. You just add them as is, okay? So you will get 90.432. However, the that number should be rounded off no, to one decimal place only, okay? Back it, no? because this number has three de uh, decimal point uh, decimal places. This one is uh, co composed of one decimal place, no? So sabi dito sa rule, so according to the rule, we follow the one with the least decimal place. Eh, no? So we follow this one compared to this one, okay? Because this one has the least decimal place, okay? So that means I have to round off my answer to one decimal place, okay? So, so I have to round it here, okay? <coughs> okay. So this will be my final answer, 90.4. However, you still have to check the number at the right side no, of your cutoff line, okay? So you have to check if this number can be rounded up or rounded down, okay? So when rounding up, you have to have a number uh, five and above, no? <clears throat> so when rounding up, you should check whether the number at the right side is five or above. So if that's... If that's the case, you add one to your original, no, to your final number now. Okay. If the number here is uh, below five, so that's four, three, two, one, and zero. Okay. So you have to retain the original number. Okay. So you round it down. Okay. okay. So the final answer should be rounded to ninety point four. Okay. Well, let's have this example. Uh, dito siguro yan. Yeah. So we have 2.097 times, uh, times tuloy, minus 0 0.12. Okay. So 2.097 has three decimal places because there are three digits written at the right side of your decimal point. So three decimal places. The other number has two decimal places, no? Because there are two uh, there are two numbers written after your decimal point. No? So which one should we follow? Is it the three or the two decimal places? The answer is two decimal places. Okay. So that means uh, my final answer should be written in two decimal places. Okay. So you do the operation as is. So I have 1.977. However, I have to cut my answer into decimal places so okay so i will round this up to this mark okay look at the number at the right side we have seven which is greater than five so that means i have to round this up okay so i have to round this up to 1.98 okay so that's the rule for addition and subtraction for multiplication and division, you check the sig figs naman, okay? So again, for addition, subtraction, least decimal places. For multiplication and division, you check the sig figs, okay? You check the significant figures, okay? So the one with the least uh, significant figures must be followed, okay? So let's have these examples here. Uh, for the first example, we have this number, 89.332 times 5.1. Okay. So for the first number, I have five significant figures. And for the second one, I have two significant figures. Okay. So our final answer must be written in two sig figs, okay, because that's the least number of significant figures, diba? Okay, so I will do the operation as is, so I arrive with this final answer. However, I have to write this in two sig fig, no? So I'm, how am I going to do that, no? So you count the sig figs from left to right, no? So this is the first, this is the second, and then you cut it here, okay? So... If I write this as 460, that's wrong. Okay, so if I write it as 460, because this is, the, uh, I will round this up, diba? So this will become 460. Uh, 
this is wrong. Okay, so my final answer is wrong because this is an ambiguous case. Now, uh, the question tells me that I have to write it into sig fig. However, I have written it in an ambiguous way. Now, so if there's cases, no, like this, sa inyong assessments, no. So, how are you going to deal with this? No? So, you have to write the number in scientific notation if necessary. Okay? So, for example, you round it off, then you ended up with an ambiguous case, then you have to use your, uh, you have to use scientific notations. No? Okay? So, we can rewrite this as 4.6 times 10 raised to 2. Okay? So, that is still 460. Okay? However, with 2, uh, two significant figures only okay so again when your final answer becomes ambiguous you have to write it in sig figs uh, i mean in scientific notations okay so ganun lang so let's have another example <coughs> excuse me Excuse me. Uh, so let's have another example. We have 2.097 divided by 1.12. Okay, so we have three sig figs there and four sig figs for the first number. Okay, so which one are we going to follow? Obviously, the three sig figs. Okay, so our final answer must be written in three significant figures. For example, this is my answer 1.87232 that 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 because that is that is a continuous number so i have to cut off right here you now after seven so that's three sig figs now and because the number to the right of seven is two so i round it down so my final answer will be written as 1.87 okay this is what i'm telling you that not all digits are to be written as is now and you must so let your final answer in its complete gl glorious decimal form. Now you're not going to do that. No, you have to check if the final answer is in is written in the correct sig figs. No. However, uh, I just want to share this. No, these rules. No, the rules in sig figs will only apply in this chapter. Okay, so I'm telling you that you have to consider sig figs only for this chapter why because later on in this subject you will be dealing with lots of zero uh, lots of numbers with different operations and different uh, number of significant figures no? so if you consider sig figs in those operations no, it will be time consuming no? so so to prevent that from happening, no. So we will not do sig figs after this chapter, okay? So hindi na time to sig fig after this chapter, only for this chapter lang, okay? So gan lang. So consideration na yon, kasi ano na yon? Baka mamaya you answer your quiz for ten minutes, no? And then, yung sagot nyo ay mali, no? And then, your final answer is correct because you did not write it in the correct sig figs, no? So, I don't want that to happen, okay? So, we will only uh, observe the rules of sig figs for this chapter, but for later chapters, maybe two decimal places will do na lang, okay? So, ganun na lang. Okay, so these are the, some of the uh, activities that you may want to work on with. No? However, I will leave this to you na lang. <coughs> I will leave this to you for you to practice. No? Uh, by the way, uh, I should note that letter E is uh, no? should be written as 10 raised to 3, not 103. Okay? <coughs> so, yeah. So again, letter E, that's not 103, that's 10 raised to 3, okay? So you may want to do this on your own time, okay, bahala, okay? So we'll not cover this in our session na lang, okay? So I will leave this to you for your, uh, for your practice na lang. Okay, so, yan, so let's continue. So we're not done yet with sig figs, no? Because 
uh, in analytical chemistry, we will be dealing with logarithmic and anti-logarithmic functions. And when doing operations with them, we have to consider sig figs also, okay? So when do we use logarithmic and anti-logarithmic functions, okay? So we use the two when dealing with p-values such as pH, okay? pH, pOH, no? So when solving for the pH of the solution, sometimes you have to consider sig figs, no? So in order for us to know what should our final answer look like, no? So we have to consider the rules for significant figures involving these two algebraic functions, okay? So suppose you are doing logarithmic functions, okay? So and this is your original number, okay? So your original number is 339. <coughs> How many sig figs does your original number contain? So 339 has three sig figs, right? So when you do logarithmic function to your number, when you put your number in the logarithmic function, your final answer must also be written in three sig figs, okay? However, for example, this is the result of log 339. So that's 2.530. How am I going to write that in three sig figs? Okay, so, so here's the answer. Your final answer after doing the log function is composed of two components. You have your characteristic, which is the integer, and the mantissa, which is the mantissa or the decimal point. So, or the decimal places, okay? So for the characteristic, you will not consider this number significant, okay? So you will not count them as significant figures, okay? So <clears throat> whether that's a single digit or more than one digit, no? For the characteristic, you are not going to consider them significant, okay? And that is true for logarithmic functions, okay? So again, when doing logarithmic functions, your characteristic or your integer uh, number, they are not considered significant. So when, uh, where will you start counting your sig figs? You start counting your sig figs right after the decimal point, or basically in your mantisa or your decimal places. Okay. Again, characteristic that is not considered significant. The mantissa or the decimal places, uh, this is where you are going to count your sig figs, okay? So, ganon. So, our mantissa is uh, 530 or, or 0 0.530, which is, uh, which contains three sig figs, no? the 5, 3, and zeros because of that decimal point, okay? So, this will be our final answer when doing log functions okay so let's have another example here so we have 3.39 times 10 raised to negative 5 so again this also has three sig figs now so that means my final answer should be written in three sig figs now however again for logarithmic functions we do not consider characteristic no a significant no as a significant number no so we do not consider the characteristic as the as a significant figure okay so we just leave it behind then we start counting our sig figs right after the decimal point or the mantissa no? so this is where you are going to count your sig figs no not here okay so do, these two are the additional rules lang, okay? So ganun ha. Again, you do not count the characteristic uh, when counting sig figs, only the mantisa. That is true for logarithmic functions. What if you have anti-log, okay? Or the anti-logarithmic functions. 
So anti-logarithmic functions are the inverse of your logarithmic function. Okay, so they are the inverse functions. Okay, so alam nyo naman in mathematics there are inverse functions. So you, if you inverse x, then you will get y. Okay. If you inverse your tangent, you will get cotangent. If you inverse your sine, you get cosecant. If you inverse your uh, cosine, you will get secant, diba? Okay, so mga ganan. So for logarithmic, if you for uh, for logarithm functions, if you get its inverse, no, that's called the anti-logarithm. Okay. So how is the anti-logarithm written? Okay, so that is sometimes written as anti-log, okay, or uh, if you are going to put it in a calculator, you write it as ten raised to the number that you are solving. Okay, so this is the anti-log, okay, anti-logarithm. Okay, so you, you can either write it as anti-log or when typing it in your calculator, you press 10 raised to what value are you getting your anti-log. You know? So, ganun. So, that is 10 raised to a number. So, this one is the anti-log. Okay? So, <coughs> yeah, so, ganun. So, that's the anti-log. Okay? So, when typing this in your calculator, you press 10 raised to your number okay so that's the anti-log function okay so when checking the fine uh, no, when checking the sig figs of your anti-log function ganito yung gagawin, huh? so this is the step that you have to consider or uh, that you have to take when checking for the sig figs of the anti-log function again anti-log okay so, when checking for the significant figures of your anti-log function, you only count the significant figures of your mantisa, okay? Or that means the decimal places. You count how many sig figs are there, okay? And, for example, this one has two digits in mantisa, or that means we have two significant figures in the mantisa, Okay. So that means when I do my anti-log function, my final answer must be written into significant figures. Okay. So again, for anti-log, you check the mantisa. How many significant figures are there in your mantisa? Okay. So that's in contrast with logarithm. Huh? So for logarithm, you write the ans you write the mantisa in the correct sig fig no okay so you will base your final answer in logarithmic function based on your original uh, original number no for example your original number has 3 sig figs then that means your mantisa should be written in 3 sig figs no however for anti log we are doing the reverse no the mantisa will be our reference no in counting uh, significant figures, okay? So, baliktad, no? So, reverse process lang. <coughs> okay? So, since our mantisa here contains two significant figures, then my final answer must be written in two sig figs, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. So, let's have some few examples here. Okay, so let's compare the log and the anti-log uh, side by side. So this is log, again, for log functions. The number of sig figs here in your original number will tell you how many significant figures should be there in your mantisa. For example, this digit has four sig figs. Therefore, my mantisa should contain four sig figs. Okay, this one has four. The mantisa should also contain four. This one has two sig figs, then the, matis, the mantisa must also contain two sig figs, okay? And that is for log functions. However, if you are doing anti-log, your mantisa will be the basis, okay? So for example, anti-log 4.37, I have two significant figures in my mantisa. Therefore, my final answer 
should be written as uh, should be written into sig figs okay so here's another example this is the antilog of 4.37 okay so my mantisa contains two sig figs uh, that means my final answer should be written in two sig figs and then another example would be this one 10 raised to negative 2.600 okay how many sig figs do i have here i have three sig figs now how Okay, so rem remember, you can rewrite this number into 2. So this 1, this 2, negative 2, that is the characteristic. And your mantisa is 0 0.600. So according to the rules of significant figure, this number will have three significant figures, diba? So yeah, because this is the trailing zeros, okay? And they're considered significant because, because of the decimal point, okay? So this number has three sig figs in the mantisa. Okay. So that means my final answer should be written in three significant figures as well. Okay. So this is the additional rule. Uh, you may want to pay more attention with this one. So you may want to read this thoroughly now. If you, yeah, because this is new. Okay. So yeah. And then last one, we are on the last part of our session. Let's review how we do conversions or dimensional analysis, okay? So when doing conversions in chemistry, we should always know the conversion factor of one unit to the other. If that's stoichiometry, then the conversion factor will be your coefficients in the balance equation. However, for measurements, then you can look up sa Google. Now, you can look up or you can Google your conversion factors if not given. Okay? So, conversion factors are the equivalent uh, values for one unit of measurement to the other unit of measurement. Okay? So, for example, we have inches to centimeter. Okay? So, when you write inches... In centimeters, then the equivalence is 1 to 2.54. Okay, so that's their ratio. Okay, so this is the conversion factor. How, how, uh, how are you going to use this when doing conversions? Okay, so you will treat your conversion factor as fractions. So you can write it either as 1 inch over 254 cm or you can write it as 2.54 cm divided by 1 inch. Okay. So again, you treat your conversions fa uh, conversion factors as uh, fractions when solving, okay, when doing dimensional analysis, okay? Which one should be at the top? Which, should, which one should be at the bottom of the fraction bar, okay? So the unit to be placed on the top must be the unit that you want to obtain, all right? That must be your desired unit, okay? It should contain the units of your final answer. And the one at the bottom of the vinculum or the fraction bar should be the given unit. So they will cancel out. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, we have this one, convert 12.9 cm to inches. And the conversion factors given earlier. So that's 2.54 cm equals to 1 inch. So in order for me to convert this, so my given is 12.9 cm, okay? Then, so I have to rewrite this, uh, I have to rewrite this conversion factor into a fraction in which my cm is placed uh, below the vinculum or the fraction bar, okay? So what's the purpose for the units to cancel out, okay? So they will cancel out. Ayan, ano and so they will cancel out and then your final unit will be uh, retained now. Uh, by the way, if you are asked no, about the correct sig, uh, correct sig fix for this one, okay, when doing conversion, your basis for the significant figures must be your original value. Okay? So your original value will tell the final number of sig figs now so you do not use your conversion factors as basis for sig figs okay 
So again, your basis for sig fig in the final answer must be the number of sig fig you have in your given value. Okay. So for example, this one has three sig fig. So that means my final answer should be written in three sig fig as well. Okay. So we you will not use this conversion factor as basis no, for the sig figs, only the original number. So let's have some more example. Okay, so for example, how many six figs are there in this given value? So I have three sig figs here. So that means my final answer must be written in three sig figs. Okay, so this is my final answer. Uh, the conversion, alam nyo na yan, the units must cancel out accordingly. So this is my final answer. However, if I want to report it to the correct sig figs, then I have to use scientific notation. Okay. So, yan. Okay. So, ganun lang. Again, when reporting your final answer in the correct sig fig, you check your original answer. Okay. You do the conversion here, then this is your final answer. You cut it to the correct sig fig. No? So, ganun based on your given. Uh, for example, this one has three sig figs. So that means my final answer should be written in three significant figures as well. Okay. Uh, make sure that the units will cancel out. Okay. And the final answer must be written uh, in accordance to how many sig figs are there in your given. Okay. Okay, so for example, this one, how many sig figs do we have here? We have three significant figures, the right? So that means your final answer must be written in three significant figures. Okay, so that's all for today. Yeah, so yeah, that's all for today talaga. Okay, so that means uh, by next week, you will have your assessment. Na, no? So this will be also the last week for adjustment. So if you're satisfied with what we are doing, then you may stay. If you're not, then you may opt to change uh, instructor path. So that's good until tomorrow at uh, Tomorrow is Saturday na pala. And this is, ano, salamat Jesus at Bernas uli. No? Okay. So anyway, so ganun lang. So if you want to change instructors, then you may do so. But if you're satisfied, then you're we're good to go. Okay. So by next week, uh, there will be no adjustments anymore. So that means um, we will have our formal uh, assessments. Na, no? <coughs> okay. So wala nang atrasan. Okay. So ganun lang. Ano po ba kailangan sabihin? Hey, so that's all for today. No? I hope that uh, we were able to achieve the goals of this chapter. Hopefully, you were able to recall your rules in sig figs, in scientific notation, and then hopefully you get the idea of the sig figs for the logarithm and the anti-logarithm functions. Okay, so that's all for chapter one. So next week, we will have your assessment. Uh, Although that will not be done during our class time, no? So, hindi siya kagawin sa class time natin. So, we, you will do it at your own free time, okay? So, you will be given three days, no? To accomplish your assessment as per the ruling of the department, no? So, the assessment will only be open for three days according to them because every one of us already adjusted to the new normal naman. So, ganun lang. What else? Uh, the quiz is composed of 20 questions, one point each, uh, multiple choice lahat. Okay, so it covers all the conversions, the rules in scientific notations. No? So, yan, so good luck. No? So this topic is not new naman. No? So I know you, you may uh, ace the, ex, uh, the quiz next week. Okay. So, kailang ko po siya you open. I usually open my assessment every weekends, no? Okay. Okay, so because that, because I believe that every weekend you have plenty of time to review, no? So, ganun. So, that's all. Uh, do you have any questions with our discussion or 
Okay na tayo. We're good to go. So, I believe wala, no? Wala nag-chat-chat eh. Okay, so, with that, so, I'll see you again next week, Friday. So, next week, Friday, our topic will be about standardization, calibration, and sampling. So, so this is another easy topic in Anakem. So, this is just terms, okay? So, we just have to remember the terms in this topic. So, this is relatively easy now. Okay. So, with that, so thank you for attending our morning session. Uh, I hope you will be safe now. <laughs> okay. And by the way, uh, later this day, there will be uh, there will be a mid-year uh, mid academic I forgot the uh, announcement. <coughs> Check ko lang. Oh, may may term the Mayo eh. Basahin ko nga. Ayun, Mayo. <laughs> mid, uh, mid academic year on orientation. So everyone is required to attend this session, faculty and students. So please attend this as your as your attendance is recorded down. No? So your attendance uh, subject na matatamaan yan will be recorded. No? So please attend that later. So that's 1.30 to 4.30. So, pasok kayo. Just makinig ha. Huwag matutulog. Okay? So, they may tell us what are the new steps that the administration is taking for uh, for the academic year or the future academic year. Whether magkaka-face-to-face -to -face classes na ba in the near future or any other uh, stuff no? regarding FAU. No? So, I don't know the whole uh, agenda, pero it's mostly about the new normal in education. And some issues lately, alam nyo naman yung mga issues sa balita. Okay? So, we'll see you again later. So, stay safe muna and enjoy your next class. Okay? So, bye-bye. And a copy of this class recording will be uploaded in YouTube. No? So, for those who do not know my YouTube channel yet, so, ask your classmates na lang. So, that's J. Kemi. Okay? So, yun. So, I'll see you again uh, next week. So, stay safe and bye-bye. <coughs>